Thanks for joining us for another Oil for the Basics video blog. My name is Bastard Jaya and I'm here with Derek Craig and today we're going to be talking about what happens after the rig leaves. Definitely after the rig leaves, there's, the work has only just begun. So a lot of stuff to cover in this video, so stay tuned, we're about to dive in. So right after the rig leaves, the very first thing that's going to happen is what we call pre-frack prep. So these are going to be all your preparations that need done to the well and to the well pad and to the infrastructure before you begin hydraulic fracturing operations on this well. So this consists of a few key components. All right, so the first thing in pre-frack prep is going to be cellar prep. And again, these are not necessarily in any specific order. These can be done in whatever order, but the first thing we're gonna talk about is cellar prep. So this is basically where we're actually prepping our wellhead for the ensuing hydraulic fracturing operations. So basically this consists of nippling down uh, whatever the rig left down to its casing head. So then you're gonna nipple up all of the frack stack, which is what you're gonna be using when you actually hydraulically fracture that well. So the system of valves and all of that equipment is going to be nippled up on top of your casing head for the ensuing frack operations. It needs to make sure that everything is at the proper pressure rating and this will help ensure smooth operations for the fracturing process. All right, so the second thing that's gonna happen in this category is what we call toe prep. So this is basically when we're establishing communication with the formation. So when the rig leaves it, you've either installed production casing or liner in any typical unconventional shale well across America. That's what you've left it with and you've cemented behind it. So there's no real way to communicate with that formation unless you have sliding sleeves or you've used a wet shoe method where you've over displaced the technique or the cement and left room for water and exposure to the formation or you need to go down and TCP it or basically establish perforations in that, at, the, at the toe of the well. So those things, whatever method needs done, that is going to be done to make sure that we have communication with the formation because we're gonna need it whenever we try and pump down perforating guns and especially we need, it, we need communication with the formation whenever we start the hydraulic fracturing process. It's also a good way to make sure that there's no blockages in the well or nothing in the, in the casing blocking any tools or any future wireline operations from operating smoothly. Another thing that happens in this stage of pre-frack is going to be what we call a defit test. And this isn't necessarily done on every single well, but it's going to depend on the operator and what their preferences are, how often they're going to do a defit test. So a defit test is called a diagnostic fracture injection test. And what this is going to do, we're going to pump a very specific volume of liquid or fluid into the reservoir, and then we're gonna monitor its pressure response. And that response is going to give key indications to completions engineers and also reservoir engineers about the parameters that they have designed in the ensuing frack job. So it's going to be their last option or the last time that they can actually change any types of parameters for the ensuing frack job to make sure that it's going to be the most effective job possible on this well and also the most economical job. Now one of the last parts of pre-frack prep is what we call basically just prepping the water and so this is making sure that your water source that you're going to be using for your frack job is set up. So oftentimes this is going to be running the water lines to location and maybe perhaps setting up an AST or above ground storage tank. Basically just making sure that your water infrastructure is ready to go for your frack job, which is going to require a bunch of water. Okay, so now that stage one, the pre-frack stage has been completed, stage two, or the hydraulic fracturing stage can now commence. And so what does this mean? Well, at this point, all of the equipment needed for hydraulic fracturing or fracking will come on location, such as pump trucks, wireline units, uh, sand boxes or sand castles, and more. And so all this equipment will come on location, they'll all rig up together, and then at this point, hydraulic fracturing operations can begin. So what will happen? Well, a wireline unit will lower down a frack plug attached to the end of a perf gun um, all the way to the toe of the well. At this point, the uh, frack plug will attach into the casing, allowing isolation, and then the perf guns will be detonated, which will create communication between the well and the reservoir. So after your well has been perfed, then large amounts of water and sand will be pumped down at high pressures and at high rates to establish the communication between the well and the formation and to establish a fractured network that will keep the fractures propped open, thus resulting in the highest amount of production and economic value. So this process will be repeated over and over throughout the duration of the lateral and each time this is completed, this is called a stage. And so sometimes there could be hundreds of stages in a well depending on the stage length and the length of the lateral itself. So after the entirety of your well has been hydraulically fractured, then all of the equipment on the surface will be moved out 
and the drill-out process may not begin. So during the drill-out process, a workover rig or a standalone rig will come on location and rig up to the well. These rigs will drill out the plugs within the lateral, um, thus preparing the well for flowback. And so during the flowback, these are the initial stages of the well producing. And so during this time, you might have a flowback crew on location, monitoring to the well, and making sure that there's um, no large amounts of sand or there's no plug parts coming out of the well. And this is the flowback period. And so after the flowback period, then the well is placed on production. And so during the first few months or even a year, the well is very strong. Um, its pressure, reservoir pressure is fairly high and it's producing um, a large amount of either oil, gas, or both. All right, so thanks guys. We hope you found this video to be educational. If you want to continue learning, please visit our website at oilfoodbasics.com learn. That's right. Check out our courses. We cover everything in terms of oil and gas operations upstream. And we just cover the fundamentals clear from drilling, completions, production, all the operations all the way down through production and production optimization, all of that. So check us out at oilfoodbasics.com learn. And also follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of them. Follow us and stay connected with us. And if you guys have a particular topic that you want us to address, comment down below. Maybe we'll turn into a video blog itself. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.